morning. My name is Mackenzie Haverland. I teach high school English at Winthorpe High School um, and we are seeking level two certification. So today I'm going to talk to you about leading indicator 2.6 which is teachers have opportunities to observe and discuss effective teaching. Um, at the beginning of the year we sent out an admin and teacher survey to the high school um, and on the topic of leading indicator 2.6 um, the staff voted on the survey with a mean of 3.04 and our one admin received the survey as well and he responded um, with a mean of 2.38. At the bottom there is a link to the survey itself um, and the results. So in reviewing our level two survey findings and our current practice on the leadership scale, we determine the need for improvement in the area of having opportunities to observe and discuss effective teaching. So prior to the work in level two, our campus did not have a very effective system in place to allow our teachers um, opportunities to participate in instructional rounds. Our educational service center, region nine, they led us through our first um, instructional round stay and from there we developed a plan to reflect on our observations and to offer this opportunity more frequently. So here's the scale we used. Um, Currently, we realized that we were in the not attempting level of having a system in place to provide teachers with opportunities to observe and discuss effective teaching. We had never done rounds as a school. Some teachers had done them before, but not it's not a campus-wide effort. So we set a goal for our campus to move to the developing level um, by putting practices in place to ensure that we all had opportunities to observe and opportunities to discuss effective teaching practices. So right here are some practices and artifacts. Um, the instructional rounds professional development, the rounds pre-meeting, the process and recording sheet, and our schedule. Um, and then we had a reflection of strategies that we observed during the rounds themselves, um, which we recorded on an observation sheet. Then we had some videos of teachers discussing their participation in instructional rounds, um, attendance in the NASA Academy, and under the instructional rounds videos, we have team debriefing schedules as well as a full group team debrief. So in the fall of 2021, the HRS team from Region 9 led our staff through a PD training on the purpose and benefits of establishing the instructional rounds on our campus. In addition to learning about the whole process, we established norms and introduced the instructional rounds observation sheet. Um, and there's a link to that right there at the bottom. The HRS team from Region 9 also led us through our first instructional rounds experience. We began the morning with a pre-meeting to go over the schedule and to remind the staff of norms, expectations, and procedures for our rounds. Observing teachers were given copies of the observation schedule and multiple copies of the observation recording sheet. Etiquette for observing in each of the classrooms as well as what the goal was for the day were discussed in this pre-meeting as well. Um, and then teachers were reminded that the purpose was not evaluative observation, but it's a positive visit to gain some takeaways and strategies that you can use in your own classroom. So you're not there to grade, you're not there to judge anybody, you're just trying to pick up positive things that you could definitely transfer into your own class. So this right here is the instructional rounds observation sheet. Um, each person that went on rounds was given multiple copies of this to record their thoughts and observations. And I have three main questions, which are, what did I observe that have formed the practices that I support? What did I observe that I would like to learn more about in case you had any questions for the teacher that you set in on their class? Um, and what did I observe that I plan to implement in my classroom? And if you click the bottom at the link there, um, the first one is uh, the blank copy that you see on the right, but the the very bottom link is there are some completed um, of these observation sheets from teachers at our school that went on rounds. So this right here is the instructional round schedule that we followed to make sure everything ran smoothly. Um, and because we don't have a ton of teachers, we're a relatively small school. Um, our elementary teachers, they were so generous. They volunteered their time as well. So um, not only did our teachers get to see high school and junior high classes, we also got to see elementary classes. So this gave us enough for four groups, um, and there are 15 minutes between each observation built into the schedule for a debriefing. Um, and if you click the link there at the bottom, it will take you to the schedule. So each observation was 15 minutes long, and then after each observation, we met in the hallway uh, after each one to quickly debrief um, with our takeaways. After all of the rounds were completed, the HRS team from Region 9 led all of the observing groups through a large group debriefing. Each member of the group shared the affirmations, questions, 
and ideas from their observations and links below have some videos of that debriefing. So after we did rounds, each group that attended signed a thank you card for the teacher that volunteered to open their classroom to us for rounds. And we gave them a free meal at a restaurant located right beside the school. Um, we did this in hopes of encouraging more teachers to sign up for rounds in, in the future and make them more of a norm in our school. Um, a lot of teachers didn't want to sign up initially to do rounds to open their classroom to others. I think it's because it's kind of a foreign concept and you were afraid that someone would be judging your practices or grading you in some way. So we just wanted to make sure that we really showed our appreciation to the teachers who did open their classrooms um, in hopes of encouraging others to do it later. So after we did rounds, we also talked about the NASA Academy. Um, we have 21 teachers in our secondary, so it's junior high and high school. 100% of them have attended the new Art and Science of Teaching Academy, as well as other Marzano-based professional development opportunities through our ESC. And the NASOT framework was a major guiding factor as we created our Winthor secondary instructional model, um, which is a huge part of level two for us. And the research-based strategies learned in NASOT Academy continue to provide our teachers many opportunities to observe and discuss effective teaching strategies. Our PLC meetings related to instruction, assessment, and teacher development are centered around the NASA instructional framework as well as the teacher goal setting. So closing the loop, level 2.6, it definitely is an area of growth for us. Um, in our action plan, we have worked to close the loop by implementing the rounds themselves this year and will continue to create more opportunities throughout next school year to observe and discuss effective teaching using rounds. Um, we're going to try to hold them one to two times per semester to encourage the collaboration of effective teaching methods on our campus, and we want to continue to involve elementary teachers to join in and, visit, and invite them to our classes in secondary. Um, having, teachers for oppor having opportunities for teachers to learn from each other's classrooms has greatly helped teachers find confidence in their own strategies and find new practices to put in place to enhance their pedagogical skills. As new teachers join our staff in the future, we will encourage them to attend the new Art and Science of Teaching Academy. We feel that we have accomplished our goal as a campus to move to the developing level on the leadership scale, and we feel as if all of the practices in place, we have all the practices in place and will continue working to achieve the applying level next school year. So these are some quotes from um, members of our staff here. Um, Someone who teaches at the junior high and high school said that rounds were beneficial in demonstrating the various ways that educators from different levels of instruction present their content. Each teacher presented their content at the appropriate learning level of their students. For me, that was the most beneficial takeaway from the instructional rounds. A high school teacher said, I think instructional rounds are a great way for high school teachers to see how some of the same teaching elements are presented at different levels. Mrs. Berger is a kid whisperer. She's a first grade teacher. Um, she had great classroom management without raising her voice above a whisper. Another high school teacher said, I feel we have improved our teaching practices greatly by revisiting the instructional model periodically to help us stay on track with our goals, as well as by participating in instructional rounds where valuable, valuable information was observed during each session. And then someone who teaches at the junior high and high school says, it's nice to see how other teachers run their classrooms and do things, but it's really comforting to have the affirmation of seeing teachers do things in their classrooms that I do as well. It lets us know that we're all on the same page, and that's a confidence boost. So moving forward, um, we will continue to do rounds at Winthorpe Junior High and High School, and we will continue to involve the elementary.